Greg at the Caddis Fly Shop. Today I'm going to share with you guys a version of the Normwood Special that I tied up a few years ago. And I did not have that color of Normwood, so I ended up substituting with Rabbit uh, Mask Fur. And it worked phenomenal. And I ended up tying these Normwood Specials uh, uh, in size 10 in browns, tans, and in gold colors, and it crushed it. Uh, I used this fly last year guiding in September in the Sierra Nevada. Crushed it. I went to tie a bunch more. I ran out of rabbit because my dog ate it all, so I ended up using deer hair. It looks great. I know it will work. Uh, gold patterns for the Deschutes, but I would also have browns, light browns, and tan colors. Uh, and you can really get creative with the different color of hackles, different color of dubbings uh, to really match your hatch. I like these in size 10, but I would also tie these in 8s, even in 6s uh, when appropriate in certain areas. And everybody, the Caddis Fly Shop is still open. We hope everybody is staying safe during these times. Uh, please visit thecaddisflyshop.com if you need any fly tying materials. They are still operating. And also uh, visit the Oregon Fly Fishing blog. Uh, a lot of good information there and also we'll keep you posted on what the shop's up to and also the current conditions in Oregon. Currently out-of-state residents are not allowed to fish. We're really hoping that that changes soon but um, the daughter's family and everybody at Caddis Fly Shop wishes everybody uh, a, a safe spring uh, uh, fish miss and uh, we hope to see you on the water soon. Tight lines everybody. Introduction. This is the fly I'm gonna tie. I'm gonna tie it in this gold version with brown hackle um, this is with the deer hair. This is the original fly when I used uh, just rabbit. I was looking for something that kind of looked like a Norm Woods kind of texture and I couldn't find the color but I found this brown and I remember making this fly with the gold body like this <clears throat> and I used it on the Deschutes. I used it in the Sierra streams and it worked awesome you know. Um, as good as an elk hair caddis in some of these streams where I've had success with elk hair caddis. This fly was working just as well if not better at times. Anyways, easy fly if you're beginning fly tire. It's good for working on your palmered hackle, your wings. Tie it in a different colors, you know. Here I did a red attractor pattern, you know, if nothing else works. Did, did some um, tan colors. I'm really excited to try this one. That looks phenomenal with the olive head. Um, of course, gold is what I had success with. I really, really like, <clears throat> I really like the rabbit wing, but my dog ate it. So anyways, we're going to tie this up today. Um, it's like a Norm Woods. I don't have the correct color. If I did, it would be a Norm Woods. So um, this is just a version of a Norm Woods. It's kind of like a stimulator, just minus the tail. All right, so I'm tying this on a 10. I'm using a uni thread today. You can use brown. This is camel. This is all I had in 8 aught. You could uh, use 6 aught. <clears throat> I like it a little thinner, especially for the head. But, uh, you know, like Flymaster 6 odd is awesome. It's pretty thin. But um, this is 8 odd. You could use 6 odd though, too, if you wanted to. Anyways, I like to lay down a foundation of thread back to the hook point. <clears throat> and the reason why is just to give everything that uh, the foundation, just to, something to grip, essentially. And, um,. Yeah, I'm just going to lock that in there. And we're going to come back to halfway. I'm just going to be using some gold wire. This is small. Since this is a dry fly pattern, I just want to kind of go light, but I want to have some nice segmentation. So I'll tie that in. And I'll keep that on the shank towards me. Start off with some... Uh, loose wraps and then uh, tighten up as you go and work your way back up just keeping a nice smooth body 
All right, I'm gonna be waxing this. This is a wax thread. You don't have to, but I find the dubbing that I'm using, and I'm using an SLF Kaufman blend today, which I love. You can actually get this stuff called Caddis Fly Shop. They actually can order it for you. It's not on their website, but um, I found it, and if I can find it, you can find it. I found it in the shop catalog, and they said that was not a problem. And I don't think uh, it would be a problem. Anyways, I'm going to be tying gold, so I'm going with um, the Golden Stone SLF. But you can you can use Hairtron, you could use Antron, any of the synthetics. Um, you can, if you want a really tight body, you could use any dry fly dubbing. You know, and uh, I'm gonna tie, put this on kind of thick. Cause we're gonna build a taper. And I just kind of keep it within two to three inches at a time. Take my time. And uh, lick your fingers if you need to a little bit. I'm going to work that back to right over the hook bend. Right about there and then uh, touching wraps forward. And when I get to about that point, I'm just going to stop and uh, add some more dubbing. Now remember, you can tie these up in brown, in tan, in black. You can get creative. I've seen these type of flies tied in purple, which is, um, for some reason, it seems like trout love purple. And you can always come back. The reason why I'm doing that is just building that taper up a little bit. Put this all in small little quantities. So that dub's pretty nice. I'm gonna take this up a little beyond uh, halfway. Probably almost to like the 70-75% mark of the hook. And that's from here to here. This would be halfway, so about to here we're going to take it up. Now if you want an extremely big uh, collar, which is a really, really big um, hackle, you can stop further back if you want it to. And you'll see that with stimulators. Some people will have a smaller, <clears throat> smaller collar. Some people will have a much larger hackle collar. Just preference and um, perhaps it could also just be where you're going. In years past when I've gone out to Montana, I would always go into a fly shop, talk to the local shop, uh, employees and find out what's going on on the rivers. I discovered <clears throat> that they love elk hair caddis and um, well, they call them spruce moth flies, which are just <clears throat> really big elk hair caddis essentially is what they are. And um, they're, uh, they were great out there, you know, so <clears throat> I'm pretty confident this fly, if you tied it in, Kind of those light brown, tannish colors. I'm pretty sure this fly would work out there. I hope everybody's doing okay. I've been tying a ton of flies. You know, we've been on this quarantine kind of lockdown thing. Minimize your place. Um, you can see I've just been tying a ton of stone patterns. Really just trying to get better. Uh, pushing myself, I guess. If you're not happy with a fly, just get a razor blade, cut it off. <clears throat> However, I will tell you, like most of these flies, if they're tied, you know, 
ugly? Do the fish really care? I would say they might like them uglier. But of course, we like them to look cool. All right, I'm going to take that to about there. I'm going to kind of pull that back and just a little head here and then take that to the front. I started laying down a little foundation there now to the front and slowly build a little ramp. So I'm doing here. And um, if you have any really long fibers, you can cut those out if you want. I think they're kind of cool though. Mimic <clears throat> some legs. All right, well, I'm using brown and I'm going to go a little smaller. This is a size 10, but if you look at that, that's probably like a size 12 hackle. So I'm going to tie that in right there at an angle up. And some nice locking turns. Cut off any little, you can even fold that back over itself if you want to. And then I really lock that in there. All right, and here we go. This is where nice hackles just really work wonders right there we're going to capture that kind of wiggle it in between the hackles so So you can see 75% is that body with that plumber hackle. Trim that out of there. Some people like to trim this so it rides a little lower. Totally up to you. You can trim here, get the wing a little lower. Personally, I like the wing to be propped up a little bit more. And as you see, I go with a really light wing. You can make it thicker, I guess, if you wanted to. But, um,. I went with the light wing originally with my clients. Like, this was the original fly, size 10, and they could easily see it like an L care. That wing sticks up, you know, especially if you're in um, softer water, not a problem. But in the more turbulent water, they were able to really see it. And um, I was psyched on it, you know, I was so psyched. All right, so if you have rabbit, I like it. I mean, you can use other things as well, like Norm Wood stuff. Uh, I just don't have it. But um, I have this old piece, not old, but, you know, I don't know, five-year-old piece of deer hanging out that I use, and I love it, especially for spinning. But I was able to look around it and find some softer hair, you know, not that soft, but like some of this other stuff. And it turns out like I really like it, you know, it's, you know, I want it to be stiff enough where it's going to hold, you know, but not like, <clears throat> I like it softer than L care. Now you could use L care if you wanted to. And, um, that'd be killer, you know, it would work. It would work. No problem. I'm not going to watch that. Otherwise my daughter, I think will eat it. Now I just take a clump and I'm going to work this clump out. I take a little brush and I get all the under fur out. This way when we tie it in, it's 
it's going to pinch much smaller or tighter and uh, not create a huge clump. <clears throat> Caribou, which is hard to find, is very hollow and it's like preference for a lot of things. Like if people are spinning deer hair, people like to spare, spin caribou. Actually, it gets a lot tighter now. I'm just going to kind of pull out all the junk. I have my, my hair stacker. And I'm going to work this. I'm not going to, it doesn't need to be stacked perfectly. Nothing in life is perfect, but um, once again, I'm just going to pull it out. Now, I see like these weird strands in there, and I just pull them out. But as you see, I just pulled out maybe about eight other strands, and some got a little longer, and I just pull those out because what I'm doing is I'm forcing myself to thin this because I have a tendency to go a little thicker than I like. And once I thin it out a little bit, um... For some reason, I'm a lot happier with it. Now, the wing preference on this one could be debatable. You could go short like a elk hair caddis and stop right there, pitched up. However, <clears throat> I like to go a little bit longer. So I actually lay it down. And here's my original one. You can see when it's propped, you can see it extends a little beyond the actual hook. So like that. And now, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. These have black tips. So they might not show up. But almost to about there. And then I'm going to just do a pinch wrap. Loose, just two loose wraps right there. I'm going to really just hold, hold, hold that pinch tight. And I'm just doing wraps. Now, as I keep wrapping, I'm slowly putting a little more pressure. Now, I'm using ADOT. <clears throat> so careful. Now I'll stop. I'll look at it, see how it looks. Looks pretty good. It's a little thicker than the original, so what I'm going to do, well, I can. I'm just going to take these off. And I'm actually just going to, if I need to, I'll restack them, but like I said, you don't need to do a huge stack. That was way too many for me. I'm gonna take even more of those out. That's more like it. And once you do a bunch of these, and it's been a while since I've done these, you'll get it down to like what you want. Loose wrap, pinch, keep it tight. And as I keep doing every wrap, I get tighter and tighter, but not letting go of that pinch. Then I take these back in little segments, really lock it down, try to do it in the thirds, quarters, whatever works for you. And then up the front, pull it all back, work that in nice and tight. Clean this all up if you can in one go. Try to get it with a nice little cut. Pull up anything else you see that you don't like. Get in there. I need some new scissors. These things are junk. But um, I look at that. It looks pretty balanced. I can move it around if I need to. But those are locked in there now. And now I'm going to start creating a head. I'm going to tighten up that <clears throat> as I go back onto this deer hair. I'm going to push it back a little bit. By doing that, I'm getting the wing to lay down more. As you can see, like that. And it's spread out. It's looking pretty good. And I'm going to start just building a nice head here. With a nice taper like so. And now I'm going to a bigger hackle. Originally, I started with, like, I don't know, this is a size 10 hook. I started with, like, maybe a 12. Now I'm going to a true like size 10 slash maybe even a little bigger. 10 slash um, eight. It's like in between, you know? But I really like it. Now you can do multiple, multiple wraps if you wanted to. Multiple wraps. I mean, you could probably get eight wraps on here if you really were 
wanting a really thick head, and that's <clears throat> that would be awesome. It would float like a cork. Um, I find it though really nice with about four to five wraps. And I'm gonna work all that up. And then I'm gonna get ready for some dubbing now. There's a few options here that you can do. And um, gold, you can stay with gold. You could go with a brown. And that was kind of what I was doing here. Originally with this, you can see that's a lot thicker of a wing, but I'll get that to taper down more. But uh, brown there, but <clears throat> I'm thinking what I'm gonna try is, um, what I'm really liking is an olive color, and I'm gonna go a little shinier. It's gonna be underneath the hackle, as you'll see, but I have a feeling this is gonna look dark and just really cool. Once again, this is just SLF dubbing. You can use, you could use ice dubbing, which is still, in my opinion, probably the best dubbing ever, ever. It's like the standard, you know? It's what almost everybody compares to ice dub. It's the, it's the standard, you know? Dub's easy. I'm gonna get that real tight. Um, Anyways, I've been tying a lot of flies. Um, trying to get out when it's safe and when I can and go shopping. And if you're able to go fishing, that's awesome. If you're able to get out to the lake, to the beach, awesome. If you're not, I, I can only imagine what it feels like. I apologize, it sucks. <clears throat> but uh, we'll get through this, you know. As fishermen, as outdoors folks, we'll get through this. Okay, I'm gonna bring that back up and uh, kind of once again get that head. Now you want to be careful um, crowding your head. When I watch like professionals, I don't know, with a, you know folks you see on Instagram and they crowd their heads, it actually makes me like smile knowing that like okay, they're humans too. Now here's what I like to do. I like to kind of wiggle this around where it gets out of all those hairs. Right now would be the time if you want to thin it out, thin it out. But I'm pretty happy with that. And um. Get it out because we're going to do a nice wrap. It's going to kind of blend in right there. Kind of get that all nice and cinched. Now here you could do touching wraps if you're on a really thick head, but there's two for me. I like about, like I said, four to five. That's all you got to do.